Today's multimedia session will cover uh, application function control. Specifically, we'll delve into how Palo Alto Networks Next Generation Firewalls can help an administrator exert uh, control or securely enable functions within individual applications. Application function control is becoming a more and more uh, critical component to security policy decision making in today's always on, always connected world. Employees want to be able to use whatever application they desire in order to get their jobs done, yet uh, security administrators need them to be able to do that in a secure and uh, um, protected manner. Examples of application function control might be to enable SharePoint documents for all users while allowing only SharePoint administration for IT or support. Another example is to view Twitter, yet block the ability to post. And finally, allow Gmail, yet block the Gmail chat and file transfer functions. Delivery requirements for function control um, are pretty specific and unique. Um, the first thing to do is the, you need to be able to identify the application and continually monitor the state of that application. When that application changes state, um, you need to be able to use that uh, application state change and identify it and uh, then translate that into policy decision making. For example, when I log into Gmail, I need to be able to see that that is Gmail traffic. But when I switch to Gmail chat or begin transferring files, then the firewall needs to be able to see that, to see that change in state and uh, identify it and then feed it into the policy table for appropriate control mechanisms. Within the Palo Alto Network's next generation firewall, App ID is the critical component to enabling secure function control. What AppID does is it identifies the application using up to four different mechanisms. Um, it then continually tracks the changes in state, uh, continually applying appropriate policy. So for example, when we look at Gmail, Gmail will flow through the different components within AppID and then it will continually check the signatures and the decoders to determine the different components within Gmail that are um, being identified and then you can apply the appropriate policy. So uh, detailed knowledge of the application functions is what allows an administrator to securely enable those specific functions. Rather than the uh, draconian block everything or the uh, unsecure allow everything, we can use App ID and its function control capacities to allow it and, and shape an application. I can allow it and scan it, or I can even schedule the use of that particular application. Um, I can do that same level of control for application functions within an individual application. Now let's jump into the uh, Palo Alto Network's user interface to take a look at the different ways in which we can uh, control individual functions. The first place that an administrator might go to learn about the uh, functions being used is Application Command Center. Uh, application Command Center um, gives you a summary of all the applications traversing the network. Uh, application Command Center is supported by a advanced multi-tiered application hierarchy that provides you visibility into the application itself and then uh, into the specific functions within some of those applications. Now let's uh, take a look at, uh, for example, Gmail. Gmail, you'll see here, as we drill down into Gmail, uh, Gmail has a couple of different uh, um, components that indicate uh, it supports uh, function control. Uh, the first thing that you'll see is the container application. What this means is that Gmail and some of the functions um, are identified by uh, App ID. Uh, the other element that is important to note is the uh, depends on applications. Gmail uh, depends on SSL 
and web browsing. That means that um, depending on how a user is has their Gmail configured, it may be uh, communicating via SSL or it may be uh, traversing the network uh, as web browsing. So those are two key components that will uh, need to be taken into account when an administrator is setting policy. Let's see uh, the different applications that are uh, contained within Gmail. What you'll see here is that Gmail <coughs> has a series of different applications such as chat, Gmail Enterprise, which is a slightly different version of Gmail. Call phone uh, is the VoIP component, and then video chat is the final component. So all of these individual applications or application functions are contained within Gmail base. So these are different elements that uh, an administrator can exert control over uh, so that you can strike the appropriate balance between uh, blindly uh, blocking or blindly allowing the different uh, applications. Uh, from here, an administrator can go into the policy tab to begin setting policies that will uh, securely enable the use of one feature while denying the use of another feature. For example, we might allow Gmail um, yet uh, deny the Gmail chat functionality. So let's pop over into the Policy tab and take a look at uh, how we would go about exerting control over those functions and that application. In the Policy tab, I've already set up a sample policy. What you might do uh, down here is uh, I want to allow Gmail. So as you see, I've set up Gmail as the policy name, the source is trust, the destination is untrust, uh, and I've selected the Gmail base application and then I've set a series of profiles threat prevention profiles to inspect this traffic I've set the antivirus as default the IPS as default and the anti-spyware as default these other three profiles will leave alone but conceivably we could go in and block file transfer uh, within Gmail or look for different data patterns within Gmail. So I'm going to click OK here and then uh, the Gmail chat function I want to uh, disallow or deny. So I would follow the same process the source, destination, the application is Gmail chat and the uh, minor difference here is the action is deny. So what I'm doing here is I'm allowing the Gmail function but I'm uh, not allowing the user to use the chat function uh, within the Gmail application. So let's switch into the monitor tab. Uh, here you see the different logs views that we have. I've typed in a query for uh, the application equal to Gmail and you'll see the different uh, Gmail functions uh, appearing, the users, uh, their IP addresses, and the different ports uh, that the traffic is traversing. You see Gmail Enterprise we saw uh, earlier uh, within Application Command Center. You'll see Gmail Chat, uh, again, as we saw earlier in Application Command Center. And, of course, you'll see Gmail Base, the base application itself, or the primary application uh, um, that the functions uh, are within. We can uh, go even go further and create custom reports to um, generate uh, regular reports on the specific applications and the individual functions. The way we would go about doing that is we would go into uh, Manage Custom Reports and then you would create a custom report that would uh, um, utilize the different elements and the different log databases to create the appropriate report that uh, can then be run on a regular basis, uh, exported to uh, CSV or printed in a, to PDF. So this wraps up our uh, demonstration portion of how Palo Alto Networks can um, help administrators uh, securely enable specific functions within individual applications. It's a very important uh, component in securely enabling applications and allowing employees to get their jobs done yet maintaining an appropriate security posture. In summary, 
Secure application enablement requires you to be able to first identify the application and then continually track the application state or the state of that application and the functions that are being used within that application. The identity of the application and the application function is used to apply secure enablement policies. Policies that are uh, as liberal or open as allow everything without restrictions um, or uh, controlling specific functions, um, allowing a particular application but limiting access time, allowing and shaping using uh, quality of service or bandwidth control. Or finally, you can uh, identify those applications and then block specific types of applications such as peer-to-peer, uh, circumventors, external proxies, uh, encrypted tunnels that are not VPN related, that type of thing. That concludes today's multimedia session. We appreciate your time. Thanks for listening.